EFF slamming the State Capture Commission for handing over the final report days after it was initially expected to be delivered to President Cyril Ramaphosa. The party says it suspects that the delays might have allowed the altering of the report. Now, the EFF Treasurer, uh, that's uh, the Treasurer General, uh, Umpile Maotwe, joins me in studio to elaborate on their misgivings about this matter. Ms. Maotwe, thank you very much for your time. Um, do you not accept the apology of the State Capture Commission Chair, Chief Justice Raymond Zondo? Uh, good morning, Colin. Good morning to the viewers of Newsroom. No, we don't. Um, Zondo must know that he's not the law unto himself. These timelines, they are his own timelines that he set out himself. Remember that the, the state capture was supposed to have been concluded a long time ago, mm -hmm. and it kept on being postponed, and the postponement meant that there's more money that was needed. So it's a sign of an incompetent a man who doesn't know, who has got no um, appreciation of the office that he's having. It, it must be a, a, a misconduct that you start a project, and you project that you're going to finish this project in 12 months with so much money that you, 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 you want to spend. Now, the project has gone to two, three years uh, later, and it means that you have now spent twice or even more than um, what you had anticipated. Mm -hmm. And now you are at the end where it's within your office, really within your, your office, no one outside, to compile a report and hand over the report to the president. And you keep on delaying it. Now, his apology is saying what exactly? Because mm -hmm. it's seven days later, Koli. So what has cost the seven days delay let, let me put it to you this, this way let, let me put it to you this way a south african listening to you right now would they not be justified when they say the eff is being petty here if anything this was over 1800 pages of proof reading that document in order to make sure that the errors are eliminated but i suppose more important this report, some people are obviously going to take it for a judicial review. And so it's in the best interest of the commission chairperson that they present to the public after a billion has been spent, a document that is credible. Does that not no, stand out for you? No, Judge Zondo is a, is a judge, is a lawyer by profession. And everybody else who are surrounding him are lawyers. So. How, how do we now come and say uh, when the, the, the report can be taken for, for, for review? It's compiled by the lawyers, the lawyers who have been part of the process throughout. Uh, that's what we're saying. And we're saying there's no justifiable reason why it should have delayed. Mm -hmm. Because we know that this ruling party, and foolishly as he is, uh, Judge Sondo, he says I was having a telephone conversation with the president days before the release of the report. So you, you can just think for yourself to say, what were they discussing instead of handing over the report? But also, I don't know which South Africans you are talking about, Koli, because if you are living in South Africa, you'll know that. The South Africans have been up in arms to say, why is there a delay? It's not only the EFF that has come out, guns blazing, saying, why are there, is the report not being released? Mm. Every South African has been asking questions, why is the final report not being released by uh, Judge Zondo? And it, it must be condemned. We must not allow that to happen. Because you have a financial year, for an example. Every year, as a, law, as a law citizen of this country, you are expected to find returns yourself. You never ask for extension. You know that in April, you close your financial year. Yeah. Three months later, you must submit your financial statement. No one is allowed or has ever been given beyond what the Zondo Commission has been given. So you must never, ever accept that right. nonsense of uh, uh, Judge Zondo. All right. So deadlines aside, let's talk about the work of processing this document through national parliament. You sit there, you are an MP. Firstly, let's start with accepting the recommendations or adopting the recommendations of this report. Do you think that parliamentarians are capable of taking the interests of South Africans to heart when processing this work instead of partisan behavior? So, uh, yeah. So one, one thing we need to understand is that um, in Parliament we've got, um, you are representing political parties. And the majority right now is the ANC. And uh, even worse, now that we do our work through Zoom, you know when you vote there, they just say, 
EFF has got 45 people on the platform, ANC has got 200, and therefore ANC with the 200 people, they agree. It is no longer the case of an individual making a decision to say, uh, I'm, I'm agreeing or not. Because when you are physically in parliament and you don't agree with this, you can just disappear and go to the bathroom. And the, and the doors are closing and they close you out. But in this case, uh, it just counts the number of people that are on the visual platform and says, one person speaks and says, the ANC is 214 and the ANC agrees. But also, let's look at the recommendation. We know that the report was only released last night, so yes. we have not gone through it. I mean, one volume is over 600 pages. But just the preliminary, what we've picked up already, is the report that says that the president must be, the recommendation that the president must be elected um, directly by the citizens. Where is that coming from? Why would Judge Zondo make that such a, a far-reaching uh, recommendation? Is it the realization that the ANC will not be in power come 2024? Because the ANC, I mean, he, he himself was praising Ramaphosa, saying that the ANC wanted to vote for Ramaphosa. The people wanted to vote for Ramaphosa, not the ANC, not Jacob Zuma. But he forgets that in 2014, Zuma got 62%. 2019, Ramaphosa got 57%. 2021 now, this ANC is sitting at 53, 54%. Mm. Now, <laughs> now, what nonsense is that? So, He's fighting factional battles of the ANC, but we appreciate the fact that he and his handlers and his the establishment have come to the realization that 2024 the ANC will not be a governing party of this country. But also, only, even if that was correct, that you elect a president directly, not via the ANC, how will that make the president not to be corrupt? Because it doesn't matter whether you come through the party or you come directly from the masses. If you are corrupt, you are corrupt. The he problem came... with the party political system, Ms. Mawakwe, possibly, I'm surmising... So, so you have a problem with it? I, I'm surmising here that possibly the justification is that the failure of the ANC to hold its deployee in government at the time who was President Jacob Zuma, it means that South Africans effectively are shut out and therefore... The people who are going to hold this person accountable, the people who are going to recall this person from office, is the ANC. We can't, as members of South Africans, as, as taxpayers of this country, be beholden to a political party. Does that not make no, perfect sense No, but the, sense the to people you? voted for the ANC, so that the ANC can get the numbers that they got, and then the ANC forwarded the name of who must lead them in parliament. That is the, that is the essence of what it is. So and why so did you the are people, blaming the public why for did voting the people in vote? the ANC? Of course. Why did you vote for a corrupt president? Because President Ramaphosa, we all knew that he's the presidential candidate of the ANC, and he went to campaign, by the way, not long ago, 2019, said, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, create millions of jobs. Come 2021 after the people have voted, private sector must create. So that's the president that they voted for. Oh, they deserve right. what they're getting from Ramaphosa because Let, that's what they this. voted for. Why don't we focus the attention, perhaps, for a start, on those members of parliament, those chair of committees like Mosa Zizwane, who are implicated in this report. What are you going to do as MPs about their continued stay in parliament when such a report is going to be processed are they not conflicted all of them are conflicted uh, starting from the president of this republic there's a pala pala uh, farm gate um, scandal big scandal money laundering kidnapping bribing torturing a domestic worker gbv right in the house of the president we are holding a, a, the president of office accountable when i walk in here you're joking to now saying why is he misbehaving in parliament it is our duty as members of parliament to hold the executive accountable. It does not matter who it is. Let's start with the president. Leave Zeben Zidwani. He, he's got no power, none, none whatsoever. The he president, leads a committee. The, pre, the president he leads of the country. The parliamentary chair. The president of the country who's, who's overseeing the entire millions of the people of this country has got a bigger scandal in the history of democracy in South Africa. None of you are, are, are speaking about it. There's a video on... No, no, you can't say none of us are speaking a, about okay, it. Okay, that's fine. You, you can't say... You. Instead, you, you about should it. be saying, what are we doing in Parliament to hold him uh, to account? No, but you saw what the EFF is doing. You want us to repeat what we were doing. The first day we said to Ramaphosa that you're not going to speak here because you, there are allegations against you. Now the same president, there's a video that is circulating. He had a meeting there at Angola saying that one of president of South Africa is, a, is, a, is, a, is, is not as good as the, me being the president of Angola. I'm going to send that video to you. You must play it there for the country to see what the president is saying. He says being the president of this country is a side hustle. 
Sure. What is more important is being the president of Angola. That's the president that the people of South Africa elected in 20, 2019. Please share that video. Now that you've said it publicly, yes. we, I'm sure South Africans would want to see and that. And please play it and please put it on newsroom. I've given it also to the communications to, to flight it. Thank you very much for your time. Umpile Mawadre, the treasurer of the EFF. Thank you very much for your time.